Hi, I'm Rachel Bullman. And I'm Jason Bullman. And we're the Bullmans. Thank you so much for joining us again in our home, hanging out with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have you back. Anything new going on with you? I mean, you strapped a watermelon to my waist. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm still smuggling watermelons or people. Benedict and Josephine have not made their appearance yet. <laughs> and this week, we there was this thing going all around social media called the Watermelon Challenge. I said, should we do, should I do this to Jason? And everyone <laughs> said, of course, yes. There should be baby bump. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Why don't you lay down right here? <laughs> what do you think? Is that comfortable? Are you good? I mean, it's kind of hard to breathe. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to breathe. Can you paint your toenail there? <laughs> I feel short of breath and I'm not having to run or anything. <laughs> Can you touch your toes? <laughs> Does your back hurt? Uh, I feel like I have to lean back. <laughs> Weird because I feel like I have to lean back. <laughs> okay. okay. Can you see your toes right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think? What's your, what's your review? To all the women out there. You are appreciated. <laughs> At least from this man right here. <laughs> Good job, Penny. <laughs> oh. So anyway, thanks for being a good trooper. You know, I do my part. And just so everyone knows, what did you think about that? I mean... Do you think you could carry this? Or? I mean, I, I don't think that men are meant to, you know? That's my conclusion. That's your conclusion. Was it hard? That was really hard. <laughs> I have I have strong admiration for women carrying children. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing that we realized as we're waiting for Josephine and Benedict is I get really tired and it kind of throws off our routine. And right before when things were a lot better as far as me just getting around, I'm a little bit more challenged in that way now. Um, we had a really great routine around prayer for our family. Like we would get up in the morning and get the kids ready for school, and we would do morning prayer together, and then we'd be able to do evening prayer together in the afternoon, and then be able to do night prayer before they go to bed. The whole saying, the family that prays together stays together, I think that is absolutely true. We know that we've done a lot to kind of foster the fact that we need prayer in our family, and it really started within the two of us, just knowing that we really needed to maintain that. In fact, when we first got together, uh, shortly after we were married and had Gabriel, Gabriel was very young. Jason was kind of thrown to the to the wolves because he didn't know that he how to balance those two things, like having a prayer life, being a dad, working full time. Yeah, prayer had become such a big part of my life, and time for silence when you're new. When you're a new dad, those kind of things go away real quick, or new mom, you know, those things go away real quickly. So we've decided really early on that we needed to kind of foster that, but it really didn't happen for us until probably like six months ago, maybe. As far as um, praying Kind as of a, incorporating yeah. prayer more. As a, a future deacon, I'll be obliged to pray morning and evening prayer every day. And so when we started doing it as a family, I mean, I knew instantly, like, this was what we've been missing. I think that's a huge part of some of the success that we've had with raising our, our kids is introducing something like Liturgy of the Hours um, or, or, um, the rosary. or the Rosary. Yeah, yeah we just recently had, uh, had picked the kids <clears throat> up from school and they were doing their standardized testing that they have to do at school. And Gabriel was telling me, because mom, I finished early. He said, I had like 40 minutes before everybody else was done. And I said, well, what do you get to do if you finish early? And he said, I don't get to do anything. He said, I have to just wait. I said, okay, well, what did you do while you waited? He goes, oh, I prayed like a hundred Hail Marys. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what? I said, what did you do? He goes, oh, well, I just, I prayed a rosary. And I said, 
oh, you did? And he goes, yeah. I said, did you have a rosary at your table? And he goes, no, I, I just prayed it on my fingers. And I was like, okay. And silently was giving myself a, a yeah, pat on the back yeah. there. <laughs> One of our sons, Jeremiah, he, he has this deep interior life. What did he say to you? Oh yeah, I was, I was getting ready to put him down for, for them to go to bed. And it was just Jeremiah and I, and he said, Mommy, sometimes when I think about the world, I get this feeling. And I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I said, I said, what do you mean? And he goes, well, I just feel this thing in my heart. And I said, well, is it a good thing or a bad thing? And he said, it's a good thing. And I said, okay. Well, I said, buddy, sometimes we're all called to love the world in different ways. And he said, he goes, oh, okay. He said, do you think that I, and I didn't even, I was trying to stay as far away from making it a vocational talk at all, just because, you know, I, I want them to come freely to that if they discern that for themselves. And so I said, um, I said, you know, you might be called to love the world in a particular way. And Jeremiah said, okay, do you think I'd make a good priest? <laughs> and I said, buddy, I said, I do. I said, it's not up to mommy though. It's really not up to you. I said, it is very much up to God and you should ask him, you know, if that's what he's calling you to do. Yeah. And just for, just for kicks, I was leaving the room. It's probably not even 20 seconds later after he said, we had talked about all this. And I was like, good night, buddy. And he goes, mommy, one more thing. How long does it take to become a bishop? <laughs> <laughs> but it, what it really revealed to us is that he actually has an innate ability to reflect on himself, like his yeah. own interior life. And, and he just has like a charism for that kind of contemplation. I went on a women's silent retreat when I was pregnant with Jeremiah. And ironically, ironically, <laughs> wow, wow, I never thought about that. Really rude. Uh, that, that, that silent retreat probably formed his spiritual life. Uh -huh. Well done. <laughs> and I was on the silent retreat and when it was a beginner silent retreat, so we came Friday that evening after dinner was when the silence started, and then it ended, I think, Saturday evening. And then Saturday evening, the first thing that I did was call Jason. <laughs> And um, he answered the phone and I said, I am so sorry. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, for all the times that I've robbed you of silence or just not given you that and not recognize the value in it, silence can always be really uncomfortable mm -hmm. at first, right? Oh yeah. All the things that, all your concerns and all those things will rush in real quickly. All those things that, that um, make you feel uncomfortable are there and you kind of want to it's almost like a fight or flight you want to like run away from it like no i can't stand this <laughs> turn on the music turn on something so um but i think for some reason the lord gifted me with that i, I mean and same with jeremiah i very much see myself in jeremiah because and then the lord brought him rachel <laughs> yeah well i needed to be balanced out yeah because i mean true. honestly i, I, I don't appreciate know if, that i don't know if i've ever told you this but in, in class i remember being in elementary and high school and several of my classmates have told me like Jason why are you always staring like are you looking at me <laughs> and at the time I didn't realize like what the Lord was doing in my heart like that he was calling me into this life so I just thought there was something wrong with me <laughs> so I'm like no I'm not, I'm not staring at you I promise <laughs> You never told me that. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So <laughs> and um, makes so much sense. <laughs> but a big part of my conversion was when, when the church proposed to me, when the Lord revealed to me that um, this this um, recognition of the beautiful, uh, of life being beautiful and being drawn into that, and 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 my deep conviction of the the uh, reality of goodness was actually personal like the truth, goodness itself, beauty itself is not some abstract thing, but it's is a person, you know? And then, and then you come to meet Christ, you know? And he's all those things, he's all those things that, that my heart's been longing for this whole time. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then prayer becomes even easier because it's not like you're trying to 
through some method draw yourself into some other reality, but rather is an encounter with a, with a person who's been waiting on you to turn to them your whole life uh, and recognize them and love them too. So we hope that you will take some time this next you know, week before you come back and hang out with us again at our house and maybe find some time for some silence. You know, I think one of the things that, that when we were having our friends or their young adults talk about silence and, and talk about prayer was a lot of them were really uncomfortable with it. And there's this book called Life of the Beloved by Henry Nouwen. And he talks about the fact that one of the problems that we have with silence is because once all the distractions go away, once all the noise goes away, we're afraid of what we're gonna hear. Mm. And we think that it's really just gonna be an echo of all the things that we already tell ourselves, which is that, that we can't do it, that we're not enough, that we're not good, that we're not loved. But now and says in that book, if we really allow silence to really become a mainstay in our lives, a way of our life, then really what you hear in that silence is God telling you that you're his beloved. And so we hope that you'll just take a couple minutes for silence. We're going to try to find some silence today while our kids <laughs> continue to beck at us and, and tr show them, hopefully, what a little bit of silence looks like. So wish us luck. And please come back, hang out with us. We can't wait for you to meet Josephine and Benedict. I can't wait to meet Josephine and Benedict. And while you're praying, please pray for us and we'll pray for you. Amen. God bless. God bless. Go in. <laughs> Dress up. <laughs> so, right on time is Miss Abigail. Can you say hi, Miss Abigail? So Abigail used to have this obsession with a Marion statue that we had in her room, and when she was little, and she would get upset, it was like the only thing that would calm her down. All right. <laughs> You can go play now. If you want. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>